I want to thank you for coming to this uh, Bloomberg event on technical analysis. I want to thank Oliver for inviting me to speak and to share some ideas with you that I believe will be very interesting. Before we begin, I have a disclaimer that past performance is not indicative of future performance and all that kind of good stuff. I'd like to give you a little background on myself and our firm. I am an author of an upcoming book published by Wiley Books called The Bible of Trend Following. I'm a commodity trading advisor and I've been investing since 1994 with groups of commodity trading advisors and hedge funds. And really what I do is I develop strategies to enable people to compound money via mechanical trading systems which are all based on technical analysis. And when I said compounding of money, this really is the key, and I'll discuss that in further, further detail. Um, I started 18 years ago after I sold a company, which I started in college to put myself through school. And then at the time when I had sold it, I had no idea what to do with the money. And trading first started as an interest, then it became more intrigued. And over the years, trading has become my passion. And as I stipulated prior, I develop trading systems and I invest with other commodity trading advisors and hedge fund managers to compound money. In the beginning it was really tough. I put my money up, I took some lumps, I probably made every mistake possible. However, I learned what stands the possibility of working over time. You can say I became a student of trading. I wanted to know everything about trading. I love trading. It's pretty similar to Oliver. He also has this passion for trading and technical analysis. The goal of our discussion on technical analysis is how to combine robust trend indicators into a trading system or plan which will determine what to buy or sell and it, regardless of any market. It could be stocks, it could be forex, it could be commodities, as well as how much to buy or sell and then when to exit with a profit and loss. And this trading system clearly is based on technical analysis. It's based on risk. It's based on the idea that this technical analysis, once it's put into a system, will help us to be consistent. And the goal is to compound money over long periods of time, as long as we have the proper winning attitude, which I'm going to discuss also. Because when you combine all of these together, they can create extreme wealth. Technical analysis provides traders really with unlimited possibilities with identical patterns that are observable, quantifiable, and repeat themselves on all time frames and markets. But you know what's ironic? Even with this and all the sophistication, most traders aren't successful. And you know the question I always say is, why not? And you know one of the quick, simple reasons is obviously most traders don't have a plan or they spend too much time just worry about the entry and not really about the whole trading plan. Nothing's perfect in this world. Technical analysis is not the holy grail in itself. Regardless of whatever type of technical analysis you do and all the different studies, it can never really tell you exactly what's going to happen in the future. But the reality is you don't have to know the future in order to be profitable. Another thing that was really differentiated my struggling and then to be consistent and I'll say successful trader over time was once I realized that technical analysis is not a better about better analysis, become a better better analyst. Because what the idea is it becomes a crutch that people are looking to eliminate risk and they try to learn about as many systems and indicators as possible. And once I learned that I have to accept the risks of trading, I made that, that shift. I learned to be disciplined, focused, patient in the face of total uncertainty. This is what trading is. It is completely uncertain. Long-term successful investing is basically comprised of several attributes. You have a trading plan which is comprised of the technical analysis which I'm going to show you and discuss exactly how we trade at Abraham Investment Management. 
proper risk and money management, proper psychology of winning, and the importance of compounding over long periods of time with, with time. And if you combine these, extreme wealth can be created. Why do you need a trading plan? Because you know what? There's always going to be outliers. Everything has to be thought, thought out. Because at every moment, you need to be knowing exactly what you should be doing. And unfortunately, even professionals like you in this audience, not you in particular, but the fact is, you dismiss outliers. And what I've learned over the years is to expect them and to embrace these outliers. Think about all the events that people really didn't believe could happen. Can you imagine being a Japanese stock market investor, seeing the stock market go from 39,000 in 1988-1989 to where it is today, 8,500? Do you remember the NASDAQ imploding? How about Enron, WorldCom, or Netflix? How about even just crude oil going from 147? And everyone was talking about peak oil, all the herd, to $34 in 2008. That is why you need a plan. That is why you need technical analysis to keep you from blowing up. As I said before, the trading plan is only based on technical analysis. And it tells you exactly what markets or shares to buy or sell. How much to buy or sell, which is really based on the risk. The more you buy, the bigger the risk. And then the concept is knowing when to get out with a profit or a loss. At Abraham Investment Management, what we do is, and I learned this from Ned Davis Research back in probably 1994-95, where Ned Davis Research, he's a consultant for many hedge funds. And I subscribed to their service and I met them. They were in Florida. They are in Florida, and I, I used to live in Florida. And I learned from them two important facts, that if you don't get anything else out of this quick discussion, learn these two major points, relative strength and trend. Look to buy the strongest. The way you can identify the strongest or the weakest, and there's an indicator with Bloomberg. You look at relative strength or rate of change. Look at all the markets. Look at all the stocks. Identify the strongest ones. This is trend following. This is what I wrote my book on for 18 years of experience and my passion. What happens many times is strong continues to be strong. Weak gets weaker. This is the antithesis that most people don't want to do. But this is how the father of trend following, Richard Duncan, made his, his money, his fortune. The whole key is once you identify the strongest or the weakest markets, then you're looking to the trend. You want the trend to continue. But the thing is, going back to our risk idea, you don't want to risk really more than 1% on any one trade. Because any trade is 50-50. So the idea is you identify the strongest markets and the weakest by a rate of change in relative strength, which are very simple, basic technical analysis tools. And complicated doesn't have to be. This is the fact. Simple works. Robust works. So identify your universe by relative strength and rate of change. And then only take those trades if you're risking less than 1% of your account size on any trade. As I mentioned, the word Richard Dompian. He, the father of trend following, was later emulated by the turtles. And there's a whole generation of traders that emerged out of the original turtles and their offspring. Third generation traders already. And maybe I'll even consider myself one of them. Again, complicated doesn't have to be. Use a simple trend breakout methodology. It's succeeded for decades. Doesn't mean every trade's going to work. But the fact is, all you do is you're buying the X bar high and your stop is to the Y bar low. Or if you're going short, you're selling the Y bar low with the X bar high. The turtles use the 10 period, I'm sorry, the 20 period high and the 10 period low. Simple. You measure the, the distance between them. Let's say it's five points. Let's say your account size, easy number is $100,000, 1%, is your risk 1% of your account size? and you're, you're, you have five points in between, you take 200 shares and see what happens. 
And also, imagine this word. See what happens. Because you put the trade on doesn't mean it has to work. For the last 18 years, I've been building trading systems and investing in hedge funds and commodity trading advisors. Really, my passion is building these systems. I'll wake up in the middle of the night, many a times, and write ideas to test with my programmer. I'm really blessed to have a colleague who's been in the field for 40 years plus, and he's as passionate as me. And we've even tested hundreds of systems or ideas, I'd say probably thousands over the years. And really what the goal has been is I want to be the best I can be. I want to have a world-class system for myself and my family and my investors. And really what it all boils down to is you have to play the defense. The upside takes care of itself. And it all boils down to, as I said, simple, robust concepts, risk, how you think as a trader, and time. So you need to be vigilant in the risk. You need to think about risk per trade. And I said already, you shouldn't risk more than 1% of your account size. The other thing to think about, and I've had my hand handed to me many a times in the beginning, where I got too heavy into any one sector. I capped my sector risk, where there were times where I took a trade in a 10-year, 30-year bond, the gilts, the boons, the, the bobbles, you name it, because I got that same low-risk signal, I thought. But when they all come together, it wasn't so low risk. The other key point is I look at my open portfolio risk in my entire portfolio. What's my heat today? What is my maximum risk when every trade goes south and doesn't work? I have a certain number that I don't take new trades at that point, and I cap it. Another super important concept that I learned over the years, and I made this mistake too, and really, that's what trading has been, where I told you I made every mistake possible. That in the beginning, let's say my account size was 200000 and I'd risk 1%, so I'd risk $2,000. Big deal. I have a lot of bites out of the apple. But you know what? When my account size went to 5,000, I'm sorry, 500,000, and I'm risking 1%, $5,000 on a one lot in a commodity trade isn't the smartest thing. What I've learned over the years is that you make your money in the quiet markets that are breaking out to the long side. So I have a, basically a set of rules which is almost like a conveyor belt. And it's automated, and it's simple, and it's robust. I identify the strongest and the weakest markets first based on ranking and relative strength with a long bias because I know I'm making more money to the upside than on the short side. I look for a simple breakout. That's it. I risk 1% of my account size on average. I have three models. I risk 50 basis points, 75 basis points. And I also have a model that's a little bit high octane. I'm risking 1.25%. How about another simple idea? You all know the MACD from technical analysis. I want to trade with the trend. If I'm going long, I want the MACD to be above the zero line and increasing. Also, if I want to go short, I want it to be below the zero line and decreasing. Another fact, I limit my positions. You get to pick the number of positions that you think you should have. It's all based on risk. And then these other aspects I discussed already are risk ideas. So my trades are a profile of a conveyor belt where you have tons and tons of breakouts. But I'm trying, trying, and I'll underword the word trying, to put on a, let's say, a low risk bet with a high probability, even though I still feel that every trade is 50-50. Then if the trade actually works, if it works, I follow with a simple average true range stop and let the market tell me when to get out. Not that I say it. And you have these ATR stops in Bloomberg. Simple. It doesn't get any more complicated. You have your hard stop where you're measuring your entry breakout to your prior X bar low. That's your initial stop. That's how you figure out how many shares or contracts to put on. Then, if it starts working, and again, if it doesn't have to work, that's also part of the psychology of trading. If it does, then let it work. Put on it, just trail with an average true range stop. It'll tell you when to get out. It touches the average true range stop, you get out. Thank you. 
and have the patience to let it work. Everything in life is rules. In sports, relationships, work, marriage, you got to play by the rules. It's exactly what successful trading is using technical analysis. You have rules. I call it a conveyor belt. And if you don't follow the rules, you're not going to win. Think about this, just to give you another like time frame. In soccer, most of the time, the ball goes back and forth and really nothing happens. And the game is won with a few quick scores. Or in football, American football. All the time, the ball's going back and forth. And every now and then, there might be a touchdown or a field goal. But you know what? You can win the game in the fourth quarter. Baseball. I can't watch baseball. It's so boring. You have innings of boring. Just nothing happens. But the game is won with a home run. So it's like people have the wrong expectation when they're trading. They think that you have to win all the time. You don't. It's like I make the analogy. If you're playing a soccer game or watching a soccer game, is this, if everyone you know, is they're scoring all the time, clearly not. What will help you succeed over time is how you think as a trader. Quick review. You take these robust, simple concepts that are simple technical analysis ideas. Amalgamate them into a plan. But then what's going to make it happen for you, what's going to make you succeed, is how do you feel? To have that winning psychology, like a winning athlete. How do you feel? And it happens to me all the time. Five trades, eight trades in a row don't work. You start second guessing your trading plan. You have a drawdown. What's your threshold of pain? And you know what? There is no way to avoid losing trades. And the way to lose in, in trading, long term trading with technical analysis, is to quit or to develop a new system or try to do a new strategy. I always make the analogy with the Olympic gold medal winners. And really, success is passion. In the Olympics, it's not just due to their ability. It's because their passion to win. When I invest with money managers, I want to see that passion. I want them to have that, that goal like I do. Because gold medal winners are split by milliseconds. You know, like you watch the running or the swimming. The guy that gets the gold medal and the guy that doesn't get a medal, you're talking seconds apart. It's the exact same thing with trading. Passion. I have a neighbor. He's 16, 17 years old. And I'm up early in the morning doing my trading, 5 in the morning, entering my orders for Chicago. Before he goes to school, this boy, he's practicing kicking the ball into the net. I'm on the phone to the U.S. in the evening. He's still kicking the ball in the net when he comes home from school. He puts in all the effort to succeed. It's his passion. It's his love. Like Oliver's love for technical analysis. <laughs> Is it reasonable to assume that this boy is going to be a better soccer player than the other children his age who don't put all their passion into the sport? I think so. It's really the same thing with traders and money managers. And if you really want to succeed to compound money, you need this passion. You know, I laugh because my kids used to play tennis and I don't have to play tennis. It's like anybody can learn technical analysis. You learn it. It's just like swinging a tennis racket. You swing it, you swing it. But trading success is really achievable by the correct attitude. Being completely consistent. Doing the same trades over and over again. The same methodology. The same breakout. And you know what? The same rules like I just said. And again, I'll give you my rules. In my upcoming book, everything is delineated. It works over time. Accept the risks of trading. Accept the uncertainty. The reality is it's not about market analysis or intelligence because there's so many intelligent people, and I know PhDs, that don't make money. So really, what, what separates the consistent winners from everyone else? It's attitude. It's a robust methodology, in my opinion, based on technical analysis. And now my favorite. The idea of compounding money. 
Einstein said that compounding is the greatest mathematical discovery of all time. How many of you really know what your compounded annual rate of return is? Because if you don't know where you're going, how are you even going to get there? It's like synonymous of having a trading plan. You put on a trade, and you don't even thought out the whole concept of the plan. What do you do in the middle of it? It's going against me. Oh, it's going great. You need to have a plan. This is the key. It's like people will say to me, how was last month? How was last year? And that's ridiculous because it doesn't mean anything because trading and trend following is a lifetime strategy for me. And it goes back to the idea of compounding. My daughter, who's in the room, she's been learning to trade. And she's been learning since she's been 12 and 13. My son. The idea is they have 60, 70 years of compounding. This is what a family office thinks about, is generational transfer of wealth. Compounding of money over long periods of time. Forget about last year. Forget about what was last month. Think of the long term. Shoot you some quick numbers. 15% over 10 years, you four times your money. You 15% over 15 years, you eight times your money. Over 20 years, 16 times your money. 25 years, you almost 33 times your money. These aren't magical returns. I'm going to hand out a, a pamphlet from Marhedge, and it, it talked about on page three, that's what I want to highlight you to, about an investor who put $300,000 in with Tom Shanks, and Tom Shanks was an eternal. He used the breakout, this exact breakout theory. It's not magic. This $300,000 that started in 1988 to 2003 turned into $19 million. I had a conversation with the marketing people from Hawksville, because I've invested with Hawksville. Again, I tell you, I invest with other money managers and commodity trading advisors that think the way I think. And they said, you're missing the whole story. This investor put 300000 in with Tom. He put in 300000 in with Bill Eckhart, who was one of the founders of the Turtles in 1988. And they also put another 300000 with another turtle, Howard Seidler. Total of about 900000 and you know how much it's worth today? About 80, 90 million dollars. But don't think it's easy. He went through long periods of drawdowns. Countless trades didn't work, but he hung in there, kept in the marathon. So proving my point, look at this piece of paper. I can put you in contact with the marketing people from Eckhart or Seidler. It's called Saxon, actually. I can actually show you their results as well as Tom Shanks. They're a handful. I'll give you more. Abraham Trading Group, they started in 1988. Compounded annual rate of return of 19.3. But it wasn't easy. They had a peak to valley drawdown of 30, almost 32%. But guess what? 6,100% return. Another example, Chesapeake. He was another turtle. He returned 1,750%. Clark Capital. I have money with a lot of these guys. <laughs> He's returned 830%. Compounded annual rate of return 15.76. But it wasn't easy. And most people quit. Down 26%. Tactical. Actually, he wrote the cover, he wrote the forward of my book. Has a David Drews. Compounded annual rate of return of 20.65%, audited real-time numbers, peak to valley drawdown, worse than 30%. Think about what some of these monies come to. And these are hypotheticals, and again, I want to reiterate, these are not commensurate of all managers. Because most managers don't get it. Most investors don't get it, what it takes to succeed. That's why I wrote my book. I wrote my book for my children so they can be the best traders they can and develop a world-class trading system. But also, to be a great investor is the next book I'm writing, actually. 
Imagine, just these are hypotheticals. $100,000 with Abraham Trading Group is worth $6.4 million. $100,000 with Chesapeake, $1.7 million. $100,000 with Clark Capital. And he's got numerous programs. Let's say this is the worldwide program. A million two. With Eckhart, almost $7.3 million. Strongly want to say past performance is not indicative of future performance. And these are unique managers because most money managers do not outperform. When I invest, I want to invest with the best. In 1994, I sold my business. As I said, I asked my accountant, who were the most successful investors in his firm? I got a name, I got a number, and I had one of my great aha experiences. I assumed that this great investor, they had the secret formula. They were a Morgan Stanley or a Harvard graduate, but no, it was a dentist. And guess what? He used robust technical indicators like we're discussing here, simple. He took $200,000 to $18 million. Don't think it was easy. He had countless losses, countless long periods he didn't make money. He didn't quit. He was patient, focused, disciplined. And you know what? He didn't have the best system. Is the turtle system the best system? The breakout? No. But you know what? You combine a simple, robust idea on technical analysis ideas with proper risk management. That's important. And how to think is important because it's the psychology. It's the attitude. Like a winning athlete in the Olympics. But the truth is, he complained all the way. Now compare this to a fundamental investor, the world's greatest investor, Warren Buffett. Sure you want to invest with him? If everyone thinks they want to. Well, he hasn't taken out on the Berkshire Hathaway, BRKA, hasn't taken out the 2008 highs. Has had numerous 50% drawdowns with with fundamental analysis, yet he still compounded money. But how many of you can really tolerate that? How would you feel? I'm going to give you an example of a proprietary account that I had with some guys that helped me develop my trading system methodology. I consider this world class, 19.75, real money, and I didn't get in right in the beginning of it. I got in a little bit later on. And I got in, it was a flat period, but this was 19.75 return. And this was a group based in Florida with some guys that I went to school with, college, that they were obsessed and passionate with trading systems as I am, and they're experts. They study trading systems, and they made their money on commissions, basically, when clients would trade this. And they knew what stood the possibility of working in the real world and what didn't work in the real world. And I invested in the strategy. I put my money up. And what's fascinating is how really easy it wasn't. I put my money up, and right off the bat, I was in a flat period. Okay, but because I had the proper thought processes that were, that were ingrained in me over the years with my mentors and the commodity trading advisors that I invested with, it was okay. I didn't just jump out. But you know what? I encountered steep and ugly drawdowns. Count going from a 370 to 270,000. That's pretty ugly. Long flat periods. Again, all the time, people ask the question how was last month? How was last year? Who cares? I understood the strategy. It makes sense. I knew that it had a potential to make money over time, depending on what the markets gave us. It's like playing a deck of cards. Playing cards. Depends on the cards you're given. It's like fishing. I can have the greatest fishing pole based on technical analysis, but guess what? If the fish aren't there, I'm not going to catch any fish. More of nothing happening. And then they sold the firm, but I still made money. Compounded money. This is the goal based on a technical analysis background. Summation. Technical analysis robust ideas and don't spend every waking moment studying to become the best analyst of each indicator. It's not going to get you to where you want to get to.
Take simple ones, MACDs, average true range, breakouts, combine them. Combine them with risk management. That's more important. Combine them that you work on yourself. How do you feel? You don't have to be right when the trade either works or doesn't work. How about I throw you this statement? What I say is, when I put on a trade, even though I don't say it anymore, is how much would this cost me to see if it'll work? This is what trading is. It's having the proper psychology. Hopefully, I've instilled in you really what is the power of compounding money. We all know what compounding of money is. You combine all of these attributes, you can, it's possible, to create extreme wealth. I welcome you to contact me. It's my goal to have informed and to educate people, clients, for long-term success. These are my contact details. I again thank Oliver for having me. I want to hope that this was an aha experience for you because we all know what compounding is and we all think the, be the more analysis the better. Well, I'm the antithesis of it. You can use all of these methodologies on Blumberg. You have the tools and if there's any way I can help you, I will gladly help you. Thank you very much and again Oliver, thank you for having me.